So the House of Representatives just passed a standalone $14 billion aid package for Israel. And you say, oh, well, those terrible Republicans. And yes, all but one Republican voted for it. 22 Democrats didn't vote for it as well. And so all the Democrats, except for 22, voted for it. So something's up. Now, there are a number of things that can happen here. Nothing happened for Ukraine, and that's really kind of the miserable thing. But what can happen as we move forward? So one scenario is Chuck Schumer could check it in the Senate. He has the majority in the Senate. It can go nowhere without the majority of Democrats. Uh, McConnell doesn't even have to be involved in any meaningful way in that scenario. Another scenario could be that uh, and, and Speaker Johnson alluded to this today, that he wants to tie um, funding for Ukraine to funding for the border wall. And that actually makes um, more sense in, in a particular way. And here's what I mean. I, I'm not arguing that this is a good thing. I would prefer that this would have been in one package and that it would be done with and Ukraine would get what they need and it's all over. But Republicans really want the border funding. And because they really, really want the border funding, tying it to that is probably kind of good. Now, it could be something else that happens along the way. But, um, and, and, you know, Israel, what they need is very urgent. It's not that what Ukraine needs isn't urgent. But getting in the way of that would be politically stepping on a landmine where tying it to border funding is actually something that could be something that keeps Republicans in the game. And Biden just has to kind of go, look, I really don't want to spend this month on the border funding. But if that's what it takes in order to get this Ukraine funding, uh, everybody's a little bit unhappy and everybody's a little bit happy. And that's the way that these kind of things work. Um, if they don't raise it later on, uh, McConnell can block pretty much, or not just McConnell, Schumer, the Senate can block pretty much anything that comes forward if they don't increase or do the funding for Ukraine somewhere along the way. So I'm fairly optimistic that something will be getting done. I'm sure they're having these conversations behind closed doors, trying to figure out how they're going to maneuver things through uh, in a way that is palatable because people, whoever's taken a stand on one side or the other has to be able to go back to their constituents and say, see what I did? That's just the way that the political game is played. And so if you understand that, and that everybody has to be able to save face in some way. That's just the political game. But I think just because we saw this doesn't mean it's the end for Ukraine. So don't lose hope. I'm still very optimistic that Ukraine's going to get the uh, material, particularly not. I, I don't think uh, Ukraine's going to get funding in dollars and cents. I think they're going to get funding in uh, older U.S. weaponry, which is what they really need. And if you watch, like, what I talked about with Zaluni, Zalushni, man, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, if you watch that video today, I mean, he was talking about he needs a, some game-changing uh, materials that will help them break the impasse. It's an impasse that the Ukrainians can't get through the Russian lines, and the Russians really can't get past the Ukrainians. So that's where we are. Thank you for your time and your attention and the likes and the shares and the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.